More so uh, at this point for practice purposes, Chase had a heavy load, and we want to make sure we have guys that can rep, and, and then we'll take those other guys kind of a day at a time. Do you expect David to practice today? Not today. Where do you see more? It's obviously an experienced guy who can play in the pinch, and then it presenters depth and then more special teams? Exactly. Um, Morris has been very productive in this league, two-time Pro Bowler, um, played at a high level for a long time. And uh, then Zach gives you a lot of flexibility, very smart, tough, uh, can catch it, can run it, and then, like you said, has special teams value. With a short turnaround after this game, the Thursday game next week, is there some thought process that maybe it, you can hold David out and give him a couple weeks and not have him try to play this week and then only have three days before the next game? I think in a perfect world, but um, once again, he, he's a tough-nosed competitor and, and we're going to be smart with him, but if he can go, he'll go. Coach, what can you tell us about the evaluation and selection process between you and the front office and how you evaluate and pick free agents? That's a tough one, man. <laughs> I mean, I, th yeah, I mean, you'd have to ask Steve, I guess, more so than me as far as how he selects um, head coaches. But as an organization, we're, we're always looking to uh, improve our roster and, and bring in guys that we think fit our culture and, and can be productive players in our systems. What do you see out of David to know that he made that next step to getting to improving? Just that explosive burst and, and a comfort level and, and doing all the things that he does well, whether it's running routes out of the backfield full speed or, or being able to you know hit a hole full speed. We don't want him to be at 70, 80 percent at this point. You obviously Chase, were able to. Chase's uh, effectiveness affect your thought process at all? Is willing to be a little more patient on a guy like David because Chase has done so well? I think we always want to be prepared for, for worst case scenarios, and, and we were all pleased with how Chase played. But um, you know, you always got to be ready, and, and so we're going to continue to bring guys in and, and make sure we have the proper depth at that position. Are you a little more optimistic about Christian this week? We'll see how he looks today. Um, the progress has been steadily improving, and I, I'd love to have him back. I'm not sure if he will be, but um, we're going to get him out there today and move him around, and hopefully, uh, we feel good about it. Are you okay with Chase getting the number of snaps that he got on a game by game basis? Not on not for an entire season, but um, he he works really hard. He's one of the best conditioned players on our team. You know, trains year round like um, you know it's the end of the world, and and he's uh, he's a guy that can handle it. I, I just don't want to put him under that for sixteen games. When you when you broke down the roster when you first got here, what was your initial impression of him on tape? Of Chase. I thought he had a great burst, uh, explosive. I, I didn't realize, I think I mentioned during the spring, the type of uh, receiver out of the backfield he was. That, that's been a really pleasant surprise. But great burst, super tough, great value on special teams. And then, you know, he was here during the offseason. You saw the way he trained. You saw his passion for the game. And so he's a guy, I think, who grew on all of us as a staff. The trade deadline is next week. Have you had any conversation with Steve about that? And after winning three straight games, do you think it's more likely you guys just stand pat and go with the roster you have? Uh, we, we've had discussions. I, I know calls are being made all the time, but um, no, gr in, not in any great detail. And um, we'll always try to improve our roster, regardless of whether we've won three or not, games in a row or not. What are the chances that you can get Morris and or Zach and Center up to speed in time for Sunday? I think pretty good. Coach Sachs, um does a great job. He's a veteran running backs coach. He, he's been in this situation before, and uh, we have a good plan for those both those guys. And apparently, they're both, from what I've heard, very studious, conscientious players, and, and should pick it up quick. Compared to when you were a player, does it feel like there's more activity the trade deadline this time? I mean, 15, 20 years later, and maybe moving the trade deadline back was a big part of it. It does, and I, I there's more so of. Uh, I think in recent years of the baseball field, some sell-off type, you know, stuff going on. But um, that's not how the entire league operates. But you, you definitely see certain teams that are making moves like that are, to me, similar to baseball. Do you, ever, do you think there's a reason why teams wouldn't do that in the past? Like if they weren't doing too well, they wouldn't want to do that? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I'm still kind of figuring figuring this deal out. But um, you, you definitely see more of that activity than than in previous years. I, I think. With winning three games straight and being in, you know, so I know the division's really good, but kind of being in the hunt, does your focus change from rebuilding to, hey, we can maybe do something this year? No, it's same as it was. We, we just try to get better every day, and, and we want to see progress, and, and um, 
we've seen it so far. Even when we were losing, I, like I told you all along, I felt like guys were playing hard and um, effort was there. We just needed to clean some things up. And, and so we're just trying to progress every week. Sunday's game was an unusual game playing with the weather and everything. But as far as receivers, did you learn anything about guys like Bear Cooper, Trent, who are doing a little bit more than usual? Just that it's an unselfish group, and they're they're about the team and about winning. I think anytime you have a situation like that, they're not getting the ball, they're not running a ton of routes, but you saw their blocking and the perimeter effort increase, and, and that's that's a good sign. Uh, so you got to tip your hat to those guys because I know they were frustrated, but it never showed, and, and they just played harder at what they're asked to do. How much do you see your offense like evolving as it has through seven weeks? It, it was one thing; it became something else. It's completely different than any we just want to get better I mean that, that's been the, the premise of the whole thing and, and as we've become more comfortable with our personnel and they've become more comfortable with how we coach and how we install and how we operate I, I think that's what you're seeing and we're playing some really good defense coming up so we're going to have to tighten things up and continue to be creative and um, put those guys in positions to be successful but they're, they're playing hard. I think that's that's the one thing that sticks out is the effort is giving us a chance and, and then the ball security. What do you see from Dennis Allen defense with the Saints? Really well coached, very sound. They don't give you anything for free. I mean, everything's earned. Um, some really exotic looks when you get to third down, but um, they, they are one of the most sound teams defensively right now in the league and have some very talented players as well. That, that obviously helps. Chase, Chase seems like he's popular in the locker room, you know, people like him, he's, you know, how, does that matter? Does chemistry matter? Do you, do you factor that in? I mean, what makes him? Char I'd say character. Like guys recognize character and work ethic and the way he treats people, the way he cares himself. You can see how excited everybody is for his success because they know the hours he's put in. They know where he comes from. I mean, he, he comes from an FCF school, didn't get the treatment that a lot of us got, um, you know, playing in college football. And so I, I know they really appreciate him having success because they know he's he's earned every inch of it. Did you talk to, oh, go ahead. Sorry. We've talked a lot about personnel today. I'm just curious about how much input you have in that process. I'm certain that you'll let the front office know what types of players you're looking for, but I'm just curious what you can tell me about uh, your input in the personnel process. Uh, Steve and I have a great relationship, and, and we uh, have open discussions every day. And um, so I'm not going to get into details on certain players, but um, yeah, I, I've really enjoyed learning that side of things, and, and he's been great for me and helped me through that. Thank you. Yes, sir. What's it like trying to prepare for a, a team where Breeze and Kamara are both battling injuries and questionable, and I mean, that's a big game plan difference if those guys are available? They're two of the greats in the game. One all-time great, and Kamara is, is as good as I've seen at that position. You know, when you talk about all-around backs, and so yeah, you prepare. For, as they're, if they're both going to play, and, and you know the guys that they've been playing for them have been playing at an incredible level as well, and so it's not like there's there's a significant drop off. But th those two are are as talented as as there are. Regardless of who played quarterback, what what could Chandler do now that he's riding this wave? You know, getting better and better than the four side. Yeah, I, I just his work ethic and the way he practices. I, I think he'll continue to improve. Teams are going to be very aware of where he's at and do different things to try and take him away. Um, but, I mean, he's a relentless worker and has a, a true de desire to be great. You were there. Go ahead. You and Drew were kind of coming up around the same, same time. What do you remember about him back when you guys were high school? Coming yeah. Um, so we were in the same area. I went and watched him when I was in high school. I think we were the same age, but he was a grade older. And I remember it was in the Alamo Dome, and they were playing the Churchill Chargers. And he was just lighting it up. And I remember he had not really been recruited in Texas. And I was sitting there thinking, if this guy's not getting recruited, I don't have a chance. <laughs> um, but then to, to you know be coaching against him however many years later is, is awesome. He, he's a tremendous person, one of the all-time great QBs. And so it, it's, it's cool that, that we get to go out there. Are there specific things you can take from when you guys were getting ready for the Panthers and it was similar where you weren't sure if it'd be Cam or Kyle and now apply it to this? I think just that you better prepare for their best. I don't know if we had a letdown, but um, we definitely didn't play our best game that week. And, and I don't know if that was an anticipation of thinking it was going to be um, not as good as, as what we got. But we, we know Teddy Bridgewater is a tremendous quarterback. He's been a starter in this league. He'll be a starter in this league again. And um, we're going to get their best shot. Are you marveled by the fact that guys like Brady and Breeze are playing in their 40s so effectively? It's incredible. 
It really is to watch, um, and especially being in it now. I forgot just how taxing it is, the season and, and the games and how physical and the length of seasons. I mean, for those guys to do it at that level and, and still perform, you know, at the way they're doing it, I don't know when they're going to stop, I guess. I mean, they'll just play to their 50. I mean, it's just I don't know why you would stop. You know, they go 30 or 40 for 350 and four touchdowns every week, and they don't break a sweat. So, What about the Saints? They're a complete team. I think that's the scariest part. They're for a year, a few years. It looks like they're building the defense to catch up with the offense, and, and they've caught up. And um, to lose your, you know, your best running back and starting quarterback, and, and go on a win streak and um, dominate defensively, dominate special teams, and, and um, still play at a high level offensively, it says a lot about their organization and their their coaching. I think a little comparison thing, but if Drew was playing now, would he get the same height that Kyler did? Because same size, same, you know, same arm strength, that type of thing? Uh, I, I think it would have been, yeah, I think he would have went a lot earlier in the draft. I think with what he did at Purdue and, and um, the level of talent he had around him and what he was able to accomplish, I definitely think he would have probably been a top 10 pick instead of you know going in the second round. How interested are you to see the matchup between Patrick and Michael? Two great players, two great competitors. Uh, Michael Thomas is one of my favorite re receivers to watch just because he's so physical. He blocks, he catches, he competes his tail off, and you see the energy, you see the passion. And, and Patrick's a lot of the same way, and, and so um, those guys will go at each other.